The Season 1 update changed how contracts work in Tier 3. Not only that, but it nerfed decoy grenades too. So now, how do you successfully survive Tier 3 solo? Well, let's show you how. First things first, what's even the bare minimum requirements to go into Tier 3? What gear do you need? Well, it will depend on your skill level. The more skilled you get, the more comfortable you get in Tier 3. Obviously, the less you will need to take in. Some people can go in just with throwing knives and decoy grenades and absolutely absolutely nothing else and still be really successful. I am not one of those people. Personally, for me, I like having a gun that is at least a purple rarity with a pack a punch 2 that will be able to kill anything in tier 3. Blue rarity is also acceptable, but purple's really the sweet spot. In terms of perks, I would highly recommend at least having stamina up, speed cola so you can put on armor plates faster, juggernaut so you have more health, deadshot so you deal more damage, and then if you want PhD and death perception. But at the very least, I would say Stamina Up, Speed Cola, and Juggernog. Everything else is fairly optional. Now, whether or not you spawn in with that stuff like I just did, or you find it in game, you grind out contracts to get all the necessary tools and pack a punch, does not matter, but we are ready for tier 3. And I'm sure, as you all know, one of the best contracts to do in tier 3 if you aren't super geared up is gonna be this cargo delivery contract. And it looks like we might pick somebody up just now. That's really cool. As you're running through tier 3, you want to run with your fists out if you can, and you should be faster than most of the enemies. I think this guy, yeah, this guy, this guy's gonna go revive that guy. Cool. So he threw a decoy. We're gonna open the garage door if you're being followed. You can kind of do a big circle. I hope this doesn't destroy the car. Oh, this is probably gonna destroy the car. Tier 3 zombies do a lot of damage to vehicles. So when you're doing this cargo delivery mission, be sure to actually avoid the enemies. And of course, this is the route that I normally take. There's nothing too special. You just hop this curb right here, nice and easy. If you see a mangler or a lot of zombies there, I always change depending on how many enemies are there, like I said, trying to avoid them. Now, before the cargo delivery contract popped up quite a bit, but this is actually one of the biggest changes they made in season one. This cargo delivery contract does not show up all that frequently. All right, we got a dead shot and an ammo mod. Pretty decent loot, I guess. Uh, I will say for ammo mods, I really like the brain rot ammo mod for tier three, especially if you're going in solo. It helps turn zombies and actually get them on your side. But with season one, they actually made some other contracts a lot more available here in tier three, one of which being this Outlast contract. So we are gonna pick up this Outlast contract because it's also not too bad. But also in tier three, you do want to loot these crates for all my goodness, we got the Wonderwath and a turret circuit. Now, unfortunately, I don't know how fast you run with the Wonderwath. It doesn't look like it's too fast. So we might just stick with running with our weapon out here. But looting those chests, you will get some good turret circuits and even some perks. And I've even seen some a lot of ether tools, honestly. You just come on in here and you activate this PND. Now, if I had a tier three pack a punch, this would be the perfect strategy right here. Sitting on top of this crate does a good amount of damage. And to be fair, with this weapon, it's not a bad strategy either. With season one, they did nerf these outlast contracts too. So there's actually fewer zombies in here. Always try to aim for the head, but when you do get overwhelmed over on that side, don't be afraid to train around a little bit, hop back on here, or hop back on the other side. See how good this Wonder Waff is. Well, that's not bad. Always use your decoy grenades if you have them. You can replenish them at any ammo station, so that's really nice. Here's this Mangler. We're gonna try to shoot him, and then we're probably gonna bail off to the other side. He destroyed our armor. Let's head on up over here, kind of just buy us some time here. And we can proceed to do the same exact strategy. Oh, he's getting close. Oh, we've got a lot of zombies. I'm actually gonna eat their shroud here. Buy us a little bit more time, I'll go to the other side. And just like that, we are actually done with this. I see another loot crate. Oh, an Icarus, look at that, that's pretty cool. Now that little ending explosion usually kills some zombies, but usually there's a little bit more zombies here too. So just be on the lookout, don't make any rash decisions because the contract just ended. Now, the first thing I really want in tier three is a Pack-A-Punch three weapon. Yes, this is pretty decent as it is, and I'll actually throw up the class on screen right now. This really isn't anything special. It's the MTZ, I think it's a 762 variant of it. Um, it's it's pretty good. It's really, I, I like it quite a bit. Ooh, there's a kill streak in there and a large rucksack, cool. But I'm still ranking it up, so it's kind of just like a pretty generic and nothing class right here. Hey, perfect example, we got another raid weapon stash contract 
contract. Now, this is nice when you're in this area because this is, I mean, nearly identical to what we just did. We're going to refill our ammo, which refills our equipment as well. So we got some more decoys now, as well as some uh, thermites in there. But the strategy is going to be the same. We're going to hook up this uh, safe drill right here, and we're just going to hop on up here and survive as long as we can. In fact, I'm going to use this cluster mine, and I'm going to stow that other kill streak to try to buy us some time here. Switch sides. I got a little overwhelmed. We'll throw a thermite here. Maybe that'll slow him down a little bit, do some damage, help me out here. Come back over. The good thing about coming back over is you usually get quite a bit. Oh, I'm going to throw a decoy grenade. It looks like there's quite a lot of people right here. The good thing about coming back over and going back and forth between this, you can see there's a lot of armor plates down here. So whenever I jump down, you're naturally going to get like a refill on your armor plates, which is really nice. And with PhD, you should be able to avoid those uh, that fire from the dog. So that's really nice as well. Much like the Outlast contracts, they also nerfed the amount of zombies you get in these raid weapon stash contracts, as you can probably already tell. I hear a mangler, so I'm going to throw this kill streak out here now. Try to slow him down. And just like that, we've got that done. Now, does that kill everything? No, it doesn't. We still got to kill this mangler, but that's a good little point here. Thermites are really good for manglers. They are weak to fire damage, as you can see. And so sticking them with a thermite does, uh, look at that, does quite a bit of their damage. That's really nice. And of course, turned right there. That's another reason why I absolutely love turned here, because you turn a mangler and it's really powerful. And don't forget, you could stow more armor plates in your rucksack if you need it. Luckily, we have enough for Pack-A-Punch now, so I'm going to ping that. I know exactly where that is. I'm going to go hit this ammo refill station right here, get some more decoys, and we're just going to run out of here. One of my favorite routes is to go up on these boxes and then get on the high ground here. It's a great way to escape most of the enemies, but it's also a great place to find good rooftop loot, just like this crate right here, which has another turret circuit. This building also has a lot of good crates on it. Usually look at this. We've got a little thing in here. Is that going to give us anything? Ah, nothing this time. But you can also see using um, death perception, you can see a whole bunch of nice little goodies in these buildings. So as you're going from contract to contract, you are going to want to loot the buildings that you can. One run, I got super lucky as I tend to do. And I got like two or even I might have gotten three legendary ether tools just by looting this place and as everyone should be telling you online and other places using the rooftops is going to be the safest place because at, on the ground most zombies spawn on the ground right there you can see all the enemies on the ground right there but here on the rooftop we are a lot safer going up to this building i love using the zip line right here you can attach to it and you should be right at the top and uh, thank you guys for contradicting what i just said about zombies not spawning on rooftops that frequently but um, yeah, <laughs> we're going to make sure the coast is clear here. I know there's a little zombie here, but we can kind of just triple pack a punch right here. And just like that, this gun is going to be even more fun now. All right, we got another cargo contract, which is good for us. You always want to do that whenever you see it. It's like the fastest contract. So if you're grinding schematics or you're looking for a lot of points really quickly, cargo is always the way to go. But I feel like that's common knowledge by now. Oh, there's a mimic here. That's going to be terrible. That's actually never happened to me before, but uh, we did it. So sometimes they'll have a boss zombie. I've seen spawn in that area but uh haven't really had that happen to me until just this time so always be kind of aware whenever you turn that corner always make sure you're looking at what zombies are over there what enemies you have to kill and uh, if you see a boss zombie be very careful because like we said these tier three zombies do a lot of damage to your car and those uh, bosses now have collision so you got to be extra careful for that and as you can see the outlast contract has spawned back in again but we just did that so we're gonna do this hvt contract normally i don't drive any vehicles i guess in tier 3 i really love staying to the rooftops and trying to be stealthy now with this contract this is going to be in this door and sometimes i like to pick this up and circle back around this way sometimes i like to go through the other way because that building has two entrances and exits but this Usually is a lot safer for me. You can kind of turn around and shoot the zombies at your own pace here. And it gets you back up to this building, which I find to be a good vantage point to go run or parachute to anywhere else. Using our trusty boxes right here, we can jump on up over here. And of course, now we've got the advantage on the zombies since they have to climb up here. We can just kind of, oh boy, that dog was <laughs> not where it was supposed to be. Yeah, this gun is doing a lot of work. This is a this is a good solid average weapon. Now, of course, I'm in the YouTube business and I know a lot of other YouTubers are like, oh my goodness, this gun destroys tier three. This gun is awesome for tier three. Here's a secret that I won't tell everybody. All right. Most weapons are okay in tier three. I know 
big, big shocker, right? Big shocker. But yes, most weapons are going to be fairly serviceable once they're purple pack a punch three. Oh my goodness. That person just died. Um, that's currently a bug in season one. Actually, I think that's been a bug, uh, quite some time. If you uh, walk by the, uh, whatever enemy you're by, sometimes it has a chance to glitch out and just die. Usually it's a disciple, but this time it was a mimic. So there's that. Now, of course, as you're watching YouTube videos, people are going to be telling you, oh, you got to use this route, go this exact path. And yes, there are some paths that I like to go on fairly consistently. I love jumping on the zip line from where we just came from onto these ladders over here to get to these buildings and whatnot. But ultimately, you should be able to come up with your own path that you like to do. You can take the path that I have, and that could be really good for you. But, you know, it's not too bad if you find your own either. Oh my goodness, I thought I was able to... Okay, well, that was awkward. The reason I'm going to this buy station... Oh, this is going to be treacherous, isn't it? There's, a, there's an abomination right there. I am looking for a juggernaut kill streak, which means I'm going to drop this kill streak and get ready. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on down here. We're probably going to aggro this big boy, but all we need to do is pop our ether shroud, and then we can do this by juggernaut and then get out of dodge here i know i know he's probably looking at us but you want to just go block your line of sight you know kind of turn around shoot the dogs if you can but uh yeah i think we're in the, in the in the clear here we're inside we should be safe it should be all okay oh boy and then if you want to just come out here use the zip line that is a good kind of safety net right there if ever you're in trouble zip lining to a ceiling should be okay and then you can use this zip line i see a box i want to open let's see what's in here uh, you know, another kill streak, not too bad. But yet again, they are giving me this cargo contract just for free. Because the game's been out for a good uh, almost two months now, a lot of people are getting a little bit more comfortable with tier three. So we're seeing a lot more people, especially with like tombstone glitches and all that stuff, gearing up really quickly. So it's rare that you get this many cargo contracts uh, just given to you. But Oh, always try to get it while you can. This is probably a mistake here. I probably don't want to go in here, but these boxes always just, oh man, I wish, I wish there was something in there. All right, I'm going to throw a little decoy here. Get these guys out of here. I know they're going to be distracted. Let's get some armor going, get this LTV and just like that. Nice and easy. All right, cargo's done. We're going to get this HVT again. I'm going to do this, make a big U-turn. Oh, excuse me, buddy. I'll go out these doors then. A lot of tier three is just like high rounds in Cold War or Vanguard, where there's a ton of super sprinters. It's a lot of taking your time and running proper routes there's gonna be time where you can still kill it because there is a health cap but you just got to be smart on where you run your routes oh this is perfect we have a disciple in this corner here and one of the methods that you can use to really take out these hvts obviously you can just shoot them with your gun and that takes however long it really doesn't take as long as you would think if you have a good rarity and pack a punch gun but one of the best ways and the most fun ways in my opinion is using these turret circuits if you go to one of these deadbolt turrets and you have one of these turret circuits that we've been collecting you put them in there it will actually act like a trap and it will kill every single thing in sight so you can even see even over here this disciple that we're gonna target and try to aggro over to us it's gonna kill all the things and hopefully this disciple can come over here disciple there we go we can get it over here towards the range of the turret maybe oh you can see it. it's going after it and just like that it's done that took like four seconds nice and easy and that makes it what is my luck seriously i swear i need to record every single game i play of this game because you guys give me the most incredible luck a wonder Waff and a ray gun that's insane now i do want to mention speaking of luck there have been times where if i cancel this escort contract it does pop open the cargo contract again however one of the biggest season one changes was that when we pick up this escort contract and then when we go to our tack map and then we cancel it over here, it does not automatically spawn in a cargo contract. That being said, there have indeed been times where I've canceled the cargo contract and it has actually, oh my goodness, like just now, like just now, a delivery cargo contract just spawned in. That might not be because we canceled the contract, you know, exclusively, but I think there's something going on in the code where they try to force tier three to have a certain number of contracts going at all times. 
So if there's not a lot of contracts, which there doesn't seem to be like a lot of contracts, maybe it force spawns in any random contract and it just happens to be the cargo contract. I don't know. We got another cargo contract. That's good. Let's run it. And I guess it is worth mentioning. I've been running in tier three here with two weapons. Haven't used my fist since what? That first cargo contract. And uh, we're still doing pretty okay. You know, we're not. Oh my goodness. That's so many zombies right there. Okay. Well, let's show you sometimes in tier three. You just got to be OK with dealing with a lot of zombies. Yes, I could use a decoy grenade right here, but I kind of want to show you what it's like to deal with all of these zombies right here. Now, the best tip that I can give you right now is just be patient. But also, in order to deal with the zombies, let me show you this first. I have a weapon out and I am sprinting, tack sprinting. I've got stamina up and zombies are not hitting me. These dogs, yeah, they'll eventually get to you. But these zombies haven't hit me and you can turn around and shoot them for a good little bit and then just keep sprinting, pick up your armor, pick up your ammo, turn around and shoot them again. And look at this. If you have a good gun, look at this purple pap three and it destroyed that horde basically in one go around. Go donuts. Look at that. But getting used to that uh, flow, I guess, when you're sprinting, slide, turn and then do whatever you need to. That gets you the distance you need to shoot for an extended period of time. Hey, let's do this cargo. Let's throw a, con a decoy over here. Get this delivery. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's no bueno. That's going to, we're going to destroy this car. Yes. Sometimes the abomination spawns here and it spawns other zombies. So that's kind of uh, difficult to maneuver sometimes, but just try to go to the left of it. That's usually what I do. Hop over this curb again. See a disciple. I'm going to cut right in the middle of these cars this time. That was a good decision right there because of how low the LTV was. Come over this ridge and we can see it looks like there's just zombies here, so we can do that. Very good. Let's see. Did we get a legendary ether tool? No, we got a sigil, so that's nice. Now, unfortunately, either because the game is a little bugged or I'm not like completing certain contracts or something, but we have not gotten a spore control contract, which is very weird. Oh, you can see this is critical damage for the car. Whenever it's critical damage, I always try to shoot it down anyway and have it explode just so that it doesn't kill me. Uh, later on. All right, so this is an interesting situation here. We've got the mega abomination. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to intelligently throw a decoy grenade and refill my ammo here. Whenever dealing with the mega abomination, you always want to try your best to shoot it in the thing or use your um, uh, field upgrade to kind of save yourself. And we're going to use a deadbolt turret here. Now, I very much could have just avoided this area entirely, but I did want to show you that deadbolt turret kind of going to town on these guys because it will definitely go to town and it will destroy that mega abomination. Man, there's more zombies here than there was during the contract, but because we have that Pack-a-Punch 3 now, it's a lot easier to handle. Now, because that deadbolt turret destroyed that um, abomination, we actually got the loot from it down here too. So we've got some more points and a whole rare ether tool. Isn't that lovely? All right, so we have a mega abomination to kill, but it's not anywhere near any of these deadbolt turret circuits. So there are a couple ways we can go about doing this. First and foremost, we can go about it just the normal way and just shoot it, which usually if you have the right weapons, you definitely can, but more so it has more to do with patience than anything. If you throw a decoy grenade, you can pop your uh, ether shroud here and you can shoot it in the face and do all that sort of good stuff, do that damage. It's actually weak to napalm burst as well as toxic growth, not toxic growth, napalm burst and um, turned or brain rot. But what the meta is right now is using a juggernaut suit. So that is exactly what I want to show you. You do want to use the geometry to your advantage. Always kind of, especially solo, put something in between you and it because those mega abominations are nothing to be messed with. So we're going to do this. We're going to take our juggernaut suit and we're going to use this death machine and we're going to try to focus fire on it. Now we will get stripped of all of our ammo here. Oh, that was one of its heads gone. So this is good progress here. But from what my experience, it takes a lot of damage to kill you in this juggernaut suit. In fact, I have never died in this juggernaut suit, but there is on a timer. You see in the bottom left, we're actually running out of time, but luckily we got it just in time. Is somebody trying to shoot me in the back? There you go. So always make sure put back on your armor as soon as you get out of that juggernaut suit. And uh, yeah, we've got some soda cans that we can use and another sigil. Sigils I found to be pretty frequent here in, in uh, tier three. And of course, after it's all done, you want to go ahead and pick up all of the uh, armor plates you can. And unfortunately, it looks like we aren't going to get to do the spore control contract for some reason this game. The spore control contract is actually one of my go to's for early tier threes. If you don't have pack a punch yet, 
Sport Control really gives you the freedom to run around the map uh, free from enemies. Obviously, it's actually where a lot of enemies are, but you don't really need to kill them, so that's really nice. But I'm curious about this Wonder Waff, so we are going to triple pack a punch it, and we are going to do something kind of special. I want to come over to this side of the map here, and I want to do this Ether Nest, mainly to show you how it's actually pretty feasible. Now, clearly, you're going to have zombies and bosses over here, but let's see what the this Wonder Off does to him, eh? Not as much as I really wanted to, but um, you definitely can do it. You just want to make sure that you know where your uh, escape routes are. Because as you can see here, we just ran a little bit. We can kind of kill all these guys. Everything is going to take a little bit more time here in tier three. You got to be patient. Honestly, that Wonder Off didn't do too bad. But as we kill these cysts, there's going to be a lot, and I mean a lot of enemies. So just kill a couple. You can kind of take a step back and destroy them as they come out. Obviously, I think your gunfire is going to attract more zombies from around the area. Just do the same thing, kind of train them around, kill when you can whenever you get a nice little break we can come in here kind of do this oh my goodness maybe we could aether shroud donuts before you die armor played up looks like another team just ran by and gave me all of their zombies i appreciate it oh my gosh i just got cornered i wasn't paying attention but that's okay we picked up some self revives Fun fact I just learned, I wish these zombies, what, can we, guys, can we, let me, give me some space, boys. I just learned that the first game of every solo game, the first contract that you do of a solo game, you actually get a free self-revive, so there's a little nugget of information for you. All right, not gonna lie, thought we'd be done by now, but I'm gonna huck a little decoy grenade in here. I'm gonna shoot that cyst, that cyst, that cyst. We're gonna reload, shoot that cyst over here, get out of dodge, because I think there's only one more. Yeah, the Wonder Off is actually a little bit better than I thought it was. That's, that's pretty good. All right, let's jump back in. Let's get this guy, because I think that's the last one. Very good. And y'all are going to be disappointed, because I don't think this gives any better rewards other than just the normal, yeah, ammo mods. So there's that. Yeah, even in the cupboards. I mean, I guess that's aged wine right there, but it doesn't. Yeah, there's nothing in here. That's so disappointing. Why even do this in Tier 3? I guess, the, you know, there's there's your tip. Just don't do either nest in Tier 3. But if you have that thing, that mission that tells you to do the stronghold or the ether nest that's exactly how you do it just like that now unfortunately being in tier three you're always in the middle of the map which means that you're always kind of cut short when you're trying to grind out tier three contracts we could probably get away with doing a quick one but these outlast contracts might not be enough time before this is completely enveloped tier three there's a mega abomination back over there we're gonna go over here hop on up here and we are safe like i said love this building love this route that I take over here. You don't need to take it. It's just the one that I like to. And the abomination cannot come in here. So you can always come in here for a refuge and he will spit out those little crawlers and whatnot, but that's those those guys aren't that big of a deal. I do like taking this way out towards the volcano because or volcano that's a that's a tornado, not a volcano donuts. Oh my goodness. Uh, but you can really easily easily parachute into tier two. It's a really nice easy way. But anywhere uh, off of this shoreline too. Uh, obviously there's bridges out and you could just jump across the river into tier two it's a really actually really fun area um that they created here it's I, I really quite like it i'm really bummed we didn't get to see a spore control contract although they are relatively easy the only tip that i have for you is to store your piece of equipment and then pick up the inhibitors for it so you always have your decoys ready to go and as you saw even though they have nerfed the decoys you used to be able to hold three and they used to last for eight seconds now they only last for six seconds we were still using them very effectively they are still your best bet at going into tier three and unfortunately we still have nine minutes left of the game but there are no more tier three contracts to do. Holy moly, I can't believe that. That is a redeploy drone that's just flying. Now, of course, if you had a sigil, you could exit through the volcano that I said, that's actually the tornado. If you have unlocked the dark ether, you can go through that act four story mission. You can exfil through there, but you'd have to successfully complete that exfil story mission. I just never knew redeploy drones moved away from the storm just so smoothly. Look at that. Does this guy move? Are you going to move? Well, it doesn't look like it's all of them. Maybe it's just some of them. That's really interesting to me. But otherwise, you can just call for a normal exfil. Hello? Can I not? I'm I'm calling for an exfil. What? Hello? Uh oh. I'm clicking, 
There's no exfil. What do you mean there's no exfil? What? That's not good. I'm gonna try to teleport over here. This walkthrough just got exciting. All right, we teleported. We're over here now. This is pretty cool. Oh, we're on top. Ooh, this is a this is a nice little teleport. Oh, we should be able to make it. Yeah, we should be able to make it. That was very weird that Exfil didn't let me call it in. Let's hope this one does. Yeah, look at that. We could Exfil here. Dang, that's... <laughs> All right, well, it's still not going to be easy because these are always really fun after the 45 minutes is up. But you just came from Tier 3 with Tier 3 Pack-A-Punch. You got a blue or purple or even legendary rarity. It's going to be fun. You do want to prioritize these Manglers, though, because they can shoot you from across the way and they will drain your damage, drain your health. <laughs> if you're nervous, like I sometimes end with this final exfil, I throw a decoy and then I touch this guy because as soon as all of your squad touches the uh, thing the countdown goes down to two and you can have a nice little pile of zombies right there waiting for you and you can really easily exfil with hopefully a lot better loot than I got. Th that being said, I got the Wonder Off and the Ray Gun, so. However, if you are still on the lookout for even more tier three tips, be sure to check out this video and stay beautiful.